Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be taking a look at the gorgeous new collection by Odin's Eye called Soul Mane 2. Odin's Eye, for those of you who don't know, is an indie makeup brand based in Sweden. Although I have some comments about that, which have nothing to do with the makeup itself, so I'll save those for the end of the video. Soul Mane is a Swedish word that actually stands for the sun and the moon, and I'm just getting this off the website description, but it also stands for the sun and moon goddesses, which you know I am all about that goddess energy these days, okay? All you ladies out there watching my channel, you better get into it. Get it Please stop acting like peasants and step into your goddess energy because we don't have time. And of course, even if you didn't know the origins of the word soul mane, it's very apparent from the packaging and the theme of this collection overall. You can just see the beautiful celestial and lunar themed artwork decorating every single item in this collection. Odin's Eye does have great artwork and packaging overall. Their concepts always seem to be really fleshed out. So I've been following the brand for a while, although I've only ever actually owned one other item by them, which is of course their Red Dragon palette in collaboration with our girl Judy. Honestly, Judy is the only reason that I actually decided to bite the bullet and finally buy something from this brand. So they have her to thank for that. But yeah, I'm glad I did. I was pretty satisfied with the palette and the quality of this but yeah, I'm glad I did because I was pretty satisfied with this palette overall. I thought the concept and the color story and the quality of the eyeshadow formulas overall were very good. This one in particular, I just feel like it was really suited for my own personal style with the more dramatic neutral tones, but then also a pop of red and green to just give me that option of adding in color when I wanted to. I figured no complaints with this one. Why not order the Solmane 2 collection as well? I've been wanting a really colorful eyeshadow palette ever since I got rid of my Fade Into Hue palette from ColourPop and I actually ended up ordering a few more older Odin's Eye palettes in addition which I won't be showing on this video of course but yeah it was a pretty massive order for me probably the largest order I've ever placed with a western beauty brand at once so needless to say we have a lot of products to get through today as I talk let me just throw my arm swatches up on the screen as well to save time <laughs> Let me tell you, these took forever to swatch, longer than usual even, not just because of the sheer amount of items, but also because there was just so much outer packaging to dig through. Odin's Eye products all come in a cardboard box or a cardboard sleeve in the case of the eyeshadow palettes, and then the whole box or the palette itself is also wrapped in shrink wrap, which is very sanitary and appreciated, don't get me wrong, but even the single gel liners, they came individually wrapped within the box set itself. So opening the gel liners, all 15 of them, was quite an ordeal in and of itself. So first, of course, we have the Soul Money 2 eyeshadow palette. This is a 15 color palette with an amazing array of blues, violets, fiery oranges, and then even a charcoal gray color in the corner here, just to give you the option of deepening everything up. I love how it gives you some really nice bright pastel options, but then you can also choose to add some more drama to your look with some of the deeper shades on the right here, like Nebula, Galaxy, or Black Hole. I also think it's the perfect mixture of mattes and shimmers. Both formulations from Odin's Eye are very, very high quality in my opinion. The mattes are very pigmented and consistent throughout the different shades. You can get an even wash of color. I will say it's not the most blendable, but they're definitely very reasonable to work with and I don't experience too many problems with patchiness. Even when using a particularly strong or sticky eyeshadow base, I find it pretty easy to still blend out and diffuse the color at the edges. So that's great. And then the shimmer formulation. I actually think that Odin's Eye has a very impressive shimmer formulation. They have a more emollient base, I think, than a lot of other brands out there. With Odin's Eye's shimmers, they really do stick to the skin very well without much hassle. Even on monolids or flatter Asian-type eyelids, they adhere very nicely and have no trouble showing up on the skin, which is, of course, very helpful to people like me. You can also, depending on the shade, you can also build some of them up, make them really intense to the point where it's almost almost foiled looking like I've done with um, Starry Sky in the middle here today. And you know with me, in general, I just love a really, really strong and reflective top coat for my looks, especially if I want to take pictures or make videos for TikTok or whatever. It's nice to have shimmers that actually show up really vibrantly on the skin and I don't have to worry about them fading because of the camera quality or anything like that. There is unfortunately quite a bit of kick up and fallout with both the shimmer and matte 
formulations. But as long as you're careful in your application, especially when handling some of the darker colors, you'll be totally fine. Okay, next we have the Solmane 2 Gel Liner set in 15 shades. I like how this comes in a box that opens up from the top rather than just the side. I feel like this makes them easier to access as well as it's just nice to be able to look at all the color options you have available to you lying flat at a glance. These were fine. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of gel liners in general, as you know. I don't like to tug on the sensitive skin around my eye area, which is typically what you end up having to do with any gel liner no matter how soft they claim to be. So naturally, I'll say that this was the part of the collection that I was least enthused about. Actually, no. I was least excited about this mirror right here, which I got in orange only. They also have a violet color. Just because I don't need another mirror and I'm cynical enough to know that no matter how cute they make these things, whenever brands throw in a mirror or a pouch or even a makeup brush set into these bundles, it's kind of like a cheat code way to increase the brand's profit margins because these things are not as expensive as the actual makeup to produce. However, they drive up the price of the bundle, right? I mean, it is cute though. It's dual-sided, so there's a normal mirror and then a 3x magnification mirror which I never use the magnified side of a mirror because it always gives me a headache. Personally, I almost prefer just a one-sided classic hand mirror with a solid back. Is anyone else with me on this? But back to the gel liners. So I think they're fine. I mean, they get the job done. They're very comparable to ColourPop's cream gel liners. So if you have those, I would say definitely skip out on these. Maybe the Odin's Eye formula is just ever so slightly a little softer and more pigmented, but again, very comparable to the ColourPop liners. For almost all of these, the tip broke off immediately when I started swatching because that's just the nature of gel liners. I mean, it's a soft gel formula and it comes in this thin twist-up situation, so I almost expected the tips to break off, but it's still very annoying. It's like product wasted, right? They also come with mini sharpeners at the end of each pencil, which I don't think I'm gonna use. Again, because it's already a thin twist-up style, so... Color-wise, they're all very richly pigmented, very intense, except for this one, number 10. This one is in the shade Galaxy. It's like a very faint metallic Cinderella blue when I swatch it against the back of my hand. I tried to put it in my waterline for today's look, but it just did not show up whatsoever, so I gave up and just went with the milk white color instead. Okay, next we have the Sunlight Love blushers in six shades, three matte and three shimmery. The first matte shade, B101 Sunset Clouds, was actually shattered upon arrival. I don't know if I'm gonna ask Odin's Eye for a replacement, honestly, because I just don't know if I can be bothered. I definitely think I deserve one if I do ask them because these retail for $20, over $20 US dollars each if I were to buy them individually. This is actually the first time I've ever had any makeup break on me while in transit, which is kind of surprising considering how often I order from overseas, but I guess there's a first time for everything. On the whole, I think both the matte and shimmer formulations are very pretty, very girly. The shimmer shades have this glittery overspray in just one corner of the pan here. Unfortunately, this is just an overspray. It does not continue all the way down through the pan, so that's kind of a bummer. The only other critique that I really have on these blushes is that I felt there could have been more variation shade-wise, for sure. If you look at the selection, it's basically five peachy, corally shades with one rosy pink shade, and of course, that's the one that shattered on me in transit. And I'm actually wearing that one, Sunset Clouds, on my cheeks today because I was getting sick of all of those peachy, toned shades during the swatching. At least part of the powder is still intact. It didn't completely break, but I still think that I deserve a replacement from Odin's Eye. And then finally, we have the Moonlight Feel highlighters, also in six shades. I like how they made the packaging for the highlighters, the moon motif, and then the blushes are, of course, the sun. Okay, if we're gonna keep it real, it's a really basic concept at the end of the day, but it's the kind of basic I can get on board with, you know? With my astrology-obsessed self. Anyway, so these are all very, very pretty reflective shades. There are varying levels of intensity amongst the six shades, but overall, they're all pretty intense and dramatic with a beautiful, wet-looking, dewy effect and a beautiful shift depending on the angle the light hits it. So if you are that type of person who does not like a dramatic, 
glaring stripe of a highlight across your cheek. If you prefer something more subdued or barely there looking, then these would definitely not suit your taste. However, if you like a really intense highlighter, cyborg gleam level as I like to call it, these may be worth checking out. I think the most blinding and also the most unique shade out of these has to be H104 Lavender Dream, which is what I have on my cheeks right now. Definitely gives me that Gen Z TikTok vibe or what's that show that everyone's watching these days, Euphoria. I've never actually watched the show, but I just know that a lot of people like the aesthetic from that show. Oh, and I heard that the makeup artists for that show also came out with their new line called Half Magic, which everyone in the Western beauty world is going crazy over right now. So there you go. That was actually like, I gave you my swatches as well as my individual thoughts and reviews on each of the products at the same time. So now all that we have left is the eyeshadow application. Stick around if you want to see how I achieved today's look. And then at the end, I will give you my slightly shady thoughts on the Odin's Eye brand as a whole. I swear I'm not trying to be mean unnecessarily, but you know I have my little opinions and conspiracy theories always, so if you want to hear about that, stick around to the end of the video. But for now, let's get into how I achieved this look. <music> So first we're gonna dip into Dream, which is this perfect periwinkle blue here. He loves me, he loves you not. I've been yearning for this exact color for a while now. Just this really perfect true matte powder periwinkle blue. I think it's so whimsical and perfect. Kinda perfectly represents the theme of this collection as well. So we're just gonna sweep that all over the lid. And then I guess my right eye gives away the look, but I wanted to have a little fun combining different colors but still all within the same color family so that they transition into each other smoothly. So for the inner part of my eye, I'm gonna go in with Galaxy, which is like this eggplant purple shade. And then for the outer corner, I'm going to deepen it up with Nebula, which is like this really beautiful deep cobalt blue. This one is super, super pigmented. You only need the tiniest tap and it will give you like no joke, this level of intensity. I'm going to soften out the edges with Dream as I go along just to keep that periwinkle base running consistent throughout the entire eye look and to keep everything nice and diffused looking. Then we're dipping into Starry Sky which is this beautiful pinky gold almost dual chrome, not quite, but still very pretty. Um, it's one of Odin's Eye's chunkier formulations so I think this is the chunkiest shade in the palette. But yeah, we're just going to sweep that over the center. A lot of fallout on this one if you're not careful. Finally, I'm going to add some of this really bright tangerine color down here called Warm Light. Sounds like a camera setting. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to take some of this and I think this is going to add the perfect contrast to the blues and the purples. So my eye look is kind of fitting the whole Sol Mane Moon Sun duality theme perfectly now, don't you think? We have the purples and the lavenders which represent I guess the moon or the dark side and then we have that pop of sunshine on the inner corner. Plus it even matches the artwork on the palette so pretty proud of myself, not gonna lie. Okay then I'm going to use a little bit of the Sol Mane gel liner in number 11 Milk White. And then I'm also taking number 9, which is called Sky Blue, to emphasize my tear bag area because I feel like my under eyes are looking a little flat. I could have also done this with a darker blue eyeshadow, of course, but I have the matching gel liner on hand, so why not? six meters wide and 60 meters long two solutions either the egyptians cut the hill but then one needs to show how it was possible to cut a hill to a height of eight meters joseph davidovitz helped by 10 participants poured four blocks weighing two tons in two weeks ah <sighs> six hours later right i was so tempted to just upload the review without this part because child i am tired okay and you know the makeup is holding up well so i'm pleased about that but let me just tell you guys, I am so sweaty and gross right now. I cannot wait to just hop in the shower and wash every inch of my body, not just my face. And tomorrow is Monday too, so the cycle is gonna begin all over again. 
I don't even get the chance to breathe. But no, I just feel like I have to say this really quickly before I leave because it did kind of rub me the wrong way, I'm sad to say. And this is not to be nasty, I'm not trying to make a big deal or anything, but there are just two things basically that I noticed with this purchase and I guess just the Odin's Eye brand in general this time around. Like I said, it just rubbed me the wrong way or at the very least confused me. So I ordered the Soul Mine 2 bundle collection along with the Norn's eyeshadow palette and Angelica Oles's um, Gila palette that she did in collaboration with them. The Soul Mane collection shipped separately from the other two palettes, which makes total sense, right? Because they probably prepackaged a bunch of the Soul Mane 2 bundles to get them ready for launch day. So they came from two different warehouses, actually two different countries, which is totally fine. But when I looked at the specific countries on the shipping labels themselves, it said they were shipped from Hong Kong and Singapore. Also, all of Odin's eye makeup is made in China actually. They do have the cruelty-free bunny mark, but I feel like it's one of those loophole situations where as long as they don't sell directly to Chinese consumers, they can still get away with having the cruelty-free status. I don't know. That's kind of a side tangent anyway. It's not really relevant. I know it's not like a scandalous thing. Plenty of companies manufacture things in China, but I feel like with certain goods, especially with makeup, brands do use the location of manufacturing as a selling point oftentimes. Like made in Japan or made in Korea, made in Italy, Jaclyn Hill. So I feel like in this case, Odin's Eye is definitely doing the same thing. They're using the Sweden-based Indies Swedish makeup brand as a prestige selling point, kind of like raise their value in the eyes of consumers. But then yet they're basically depending almost solely on cheaper materials, cheaper manufacturing costs, resources, probably labor as well of that of Asian countries. And they don't even write on their website as far as I can tell that any of their products are in fact made in China. So I don't really like that if I'm gonna be honest. Because it's like, okay, so then why don't you just say that you're an Asian makeup brand then? Oh wait, I know why, because a Scandinavian country sounds more bougie. Mm-hmm, okay, I see the games that you're up to. Look, even with all of that aside, I still felt like I could give this brand a chance because of the fact that they did collaborate with Judy, who is a smaller Asian influencer who I stan. So they definitely got points in my book for that, but then that brings me to point number two, which probably is perplexing me the most out of everything here today. When I looked at the invoice included in my package, it said, clearly that I used the discount code Angeshka, which is actually Angelica Oles' discount code. Nothing against Angelica Oles, okay? This is really not to insult anyone. I watched some of Angelica's videos. I think she seems like a really, really nice lady. But I specifically put in Judy's name for my order because that's who I want my monetary support to go to at the end of the day, a fellow Asian creator. I even have the original email invoice to prove it. It clearly says Judy. So I know for a fact that the computer didn't accidentally switch out Judy for Angeshka. And I hate to go this far, but isn't Angelica Oles herself Swedish? She lives in the US now, but she's originally from Sweden, right? So is it possible that somebody purposely switched out my favorite Asian beauty creator's name with that of a native Swedish beauty creator at the time of my checkout because you're not about to gaslight me and what games are you playing here, Odin's Eye? I'm honestly contemplating if I should pull a Karen. I'm honestly contemplating if I should pull a Karen here. I feel like this is one of those rare situations that maybe warrants a tiny baby Karen move. You know, just emailing them and letting them know that, hey, Make sure you give the kickback on this order to Judy because that's the name that I put down. You know, my order this time was over $300, so even 15% or whatever the kickback rate it is that these creators get off of their codes, that's a substantial amount off of just my order alone. So yeah, you're damn straight I wanted to go to the right person. Anyway, it's just unfortunate because I really was starting to fall in love with their eyeshadow formula. They might even have one of my more favorite eyeshadow formulations out there, hands down, but it's clouded by all this shadiness to the point where I couldn't even fully enjoy this look that I created today. I actually would consider this one of my best looks ever, not right at this second because it's melting off my face as we speak, but when I first applied it, I thought it looked amazing. The colors look nice together, it matches my skin tone, it matches my clothes. It was just like an effortless, colorful, pastel look, but I couldn't even enjoy it fully because I just kept thinking about all these weird things surrounding my order this time. So that is the shady conclusion of this video. Odin's Eye, I like your stuff. I want to keep supporting you, but I'm keeping my eye on you, okay? I am side-eyeing Odin's Eye. 
And with that, I would like to thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye!